Hi there, I'm Seb Maley, and in this video we'll be analysing the recent PGMOL case, uh, which we seem to have been waiting for forever, and uh, as I will explain, um, did not get the result that people were expecting. PGMOL stands for um, Professional Game Match Officials Limited and is the body responsible for overseeing and providing match officials in English professional football. Um, this includes uh, referees, assistant referees and fourth officials. Uh, referees and assistant referees in the Premier League are part of uh, what is called the Select Group and are full-time employees, but um, all other officials uh, from the Championship down operate on a self-employed basis. Um, the case uh, first became public knowledge back in 2018 um, when it was heard at a first-tier tax tribunal. Um, a first-tier tribunal is triggered um, when the parties can't agree on a position uh, following an investigation. So in this case, um, the PGMOL appealed against HMRC's final decision that these referees were not self-employed. Um, the tribunal um, has the job of collating all of the evidence from both sides, um, hearing detailed witness testimonies and um, ultimately deciding whether they agree uh, with HMRC or the taxpayer. Uh, back in 2018, the judges decided that HMRC were not correct in their assertion that the referees should be employed and upheld PGMOL's appeal. Um, at this stage, the losing party can either accept the tribunal's decision and move on, or appeal again based on specific factors um, from the first tier's judgments. Um, over recent years, HMRC have been quite aggressive with pushing cases through tribunals, so it didn't come as much of a surprise um, when they did appeal in this instance. Um, these appeals go to what is called an upper tribunal. Um, unlike the first tier tribunal, which amasses the facts and evidence, um, the upper tribunal essentially has to decide whether the first tier judges applied the law correctly or not um, before ultimately making a decision. Um, the upper tier hearing um, took place in January 2020 and went through all of the detail and meant, uh, all of the decisions made by the first tier judges in great depth. Um, in the end, uh, the upper tribunal decided that the judges um, had erred on some points but were correct in much of their findings and, and overall um, the referees should still be classed as self-employed. Now, because of the costs involved, um, most cases would end at this point and uh, HMRC would uh, leave with their tail between their legs. Um, However, uh, they, they clearly see the PGMOL case as significant and appealed again, and we again shift up the court system and move on to the Court of Appeal. Um, the case was eventually heard in July this year, a full three years after the first tier tribunal hearing, which just shows how long these processes can take. Um, again, uh, the Court of Appeal has to determine whether the judges in the first and upper tribunal um, erred in law uh, before making a decision, and we had a further two months wait um, before the judgment was released. Um, because the case had been through two tribunals and uh, PGMOL had won in both, um, a lot of people expected the Court of Appeal to follow suit and again find that the referee should be self-employed. Um, however, the judges decided um, that both the first tier and upper tribunals had erred in law on several key factors, and they upheld HMRC's appeal, which came as quite a surprise. Um, what also surprised people was that the judges um, didn't then decide whether uh, what the referee's status should actually be, um, but have sent the case back to the first tier tribunal to start the process again. Um, given it took three years to get from the first tier to the Court of Appeal, it's quite a um, frustrating turn of events for people who are waiting patiently for the result. Um, the PGMOL case um, clearly involves a very unique set of circumstances. At a high level, it is difficult to um, draw parallels from football referees to freelancers or contractors working in completely different roles. Um, there was, uh, however, a hell of a lot riding on it. Uh, 
um, from the um, perspective of clarifying case law. Um, the two main areas of debate in PGMOL were control um, and whether there was a, a framework of control around the referees and uh, mutuality of obligation, which is perhaps the most grey and confusing area of employment status. Um, HMRC's view is that a mutuality of obligation exists by default, whereas the counter-argument is that there are um, varying degrees of mutuality and only some would suggest an employment relationship. Um, the hope was that uh, this case would finally clarify that and if PGMOL had won at the Court of Appeal, it would have meant that HMRC would probably have to rewrite their CES tool, which um, ignores Moo completely. There are also several uh, live cases that were hinging on this result too. Um, we spoke just last month about the George Brantidis case, which was heard at the Upper Tribunal in August, uh, where the, the parties agreed to defer the decision until the result of PGMOL. To be honest, I genuinely don't know what will happen with that case now, but you have to feel for Mr. Mantidis, who potentially faces a very long wait uh, before he has um, any kind of a, a result for his case. HMRC will certainly feel buoyed by the result, um, but it is far from an outright win for them. We, um, we don't know yet when the first tier, uh, hearing will be, but uh, this case is, uh, is going to continue for some time. We will, of course, um, keep you updated on any developments over the next few months. Thanks for watching, uh, please subscribe to our channel for more video updates and we'll see you next time.